our video history of Rossmar. In this episode, we will talk about Ross Cortesi and the development of the community in which we live. It covers a period from 1960 to 1967. The land that Ross Cortesi bought from the Dollar family covered 2,200 acres. And it was much the same then as it was in 1760 when the Sackland Indians lived here. An aerial photograph taken in 1962 shows the grassy ridges like sloping fingers cupping the valley with its oak-covered streams. The Dollar Ranch buildings, once the site of the Sackland Indian Village, was hidden among trees at the entrance. The Dollar House sat lost in the trees about halfway up the valley. Further on was the Buckeye Groves where the Tennis courts were built 25 years later. Ross Cortese had begun the construction business in Southern California, building fixer-uppers, and then moved into tract homes. When he discovered that the government was willing to finance low-cost housing for adults, he decided to get into the business. He developed the concept of active adult communities. These were not to be nursing facilities, but homes where seniors could live free of the cares of home maintenance and devote themselves to pleasurable activities. He had developed this concept first at Seal Beach and then Laguna Hills in Southern California. He was now ready to expand his operation. With the dollar property in hand, Cortese approached the Walnut Creek City Council with his plan for a leisure world of Rossmore Walnut Creek. They approved his proposal and planned to incorporate it into the city. By 1963, Construction equipment had arrived. The hillsides were re-sculptured into terraces. Over four million cubic yards of dirt were removed. Storm drains, water mains, and sewer lines were buried in the ground, and the first streets were laid out. Work was begun on the main clubhouse, the sales office, and the model homes. Meanwhile, an ad campaign was initiated. The public had to be educated on the advantages of an active senior community, where benefits such as swimming pools, arts and crafts studios, golf courses, and bowling greens, and medical facilities were available for one simple monthly fee that included the mortgage payment and the maintenance of the property. Full-page ads appeared in the local newspapers, the Chronicle, the Contra Costa Times, and the Oakland Tribune all had their ads. Articles were written for the national magazines. Cortese staff members appeared on talk shows to explain and answer questions about Walnut Creek's new leisure world. People eagerly awaited the chance to see this community. Soon the clubhouse was finished and the parking lot was paved and model homes were furnished and ready for viewing. Cars began to appear on Tice Valley Boulevard looking for the globe that marked this, the road into Rossmore. The globe with its waterfall, fountain, and colorful lighting was a dramatic logo for the new Leisure World community that opened for inspection on February 27, 1964. The sales staff were overwhelmed by the many who came the first few weeks uh, to claim a manor in this new community. The first day, 114 units were sold at $1,500 down. 
All the units were cooperative. That is, the residents owned a share in a stock in the mutual corporation. As a shareholder, they were entitled to live in one of the units. According to the FHA, the Federal Housing Administration, 90% of the units needed to be sold before the 40-year mortgage at 5.5% could be obtained and the buildings constructed. Mutual One, because of its size, 564 units, was covered by two mortgages. All future mutuals had single mortgages. Mutual Two and Three were quickly sold and construction were begun. Sales continued to be active, and by July of 1965, construction of Mutual 3 was 75% completed, and Mutual 4, 50% completed. 90% of the shares in Mutual 5 had buyers, and by August, 100 units in Mutual 6 had been ascribed to. The first residents of Mutual One moved into their manor on Tice Creek Boulevard at Oakmont Way in September of 1964. By December, there were 641 ma residents in 361 manors. They had already organized clubs, formed church groups, planned educational classes, and were busy with their parties and other social activities. Bridge and poker teams were organized. Arts, ceramic, wood shop, and sewing clubs were busy. The staff for maintenance, recreation, and services, known as the Leisure World Foundation, kept everything running smoothly. The Education and Recreation Department developed Fun Day on the very first Thursday of, its, of our existence. They handled all the routine chores, much as Golden Rain Foundation's various sections do today. The Leisure World Foundation was part of Ross Cortese's corporation with offices in each of the Leisure World. May of 1965 saw the opening of the golf course and in September, the shopping center was ready for business. Work was soon completed on the remodeled Dollar Clubhouse, and it had its grand opening in October. As the first anniversary of Rossmore drew near, notice went out to the residents of Mutual One that it was time to elect its own directors for the coming year. Perhaps at this point, we should take a moment to discuss the organizational structure of the Valley. The basic plan developed by Ross Cortese was that the team should organize as a business. This became the basis for our organizational structure. Each mutual, as it created, would have a set of directors selected by the property owners originally the Rossmore Corporation, which would adopt the bylaws and plan for the organization and development of the community. When all shares had been sold and the residents had moved in, and at the end of the first year, the residents themselves would elect the new directors. The election would enable the residents to become active in their governments. In order to ensure the smooth flow of authority, one of the directors was the Leisure World Administrator. The following year, he would be replaced by a resident. By contract between Mutual One and the Golden Rain Foundation, the Golden Rain Foundation would manage the common facilities and the mutuals would manage the housing units and the surrounding areas. As other mutuals were established, they would formally agree to this contract. 
So it was in September of 1965 that the residents of Mutual One elected their first directors. W. Frank Papp, C. Eugene Johnson, and Robert Nelson were elected as director. Robert Nelson was the administrator of the Leisure World Foundation, and his job was to help the Mutual in developing its government principles and procedures. He worked with them in establishing their budget for the following year and main control the routine operations. In October of 1965, Mutual II elected officers. Robert Nelson served as president. In Mutual III, Robert Nelson was elected vice president. The directors of the various Mutuals in due time would select members to be part of the Golden Rain Board to serve as its directors. During these early years, it was usual for the Golden Rain Board and the active mutuals to meet together as a single body, but to vote separately on the issues of mutual concern. <laughs> Most mute Golden Rain directors also happen to be mutual directors. The Rossmore News first appeared as the Leisure World News soon after the first residents moved in. It was a mineographed four-page paper with news and announcements of coming events. It was April 15th in 1965 that the newspaper as we know it first appeared. The headline featured no news of the passage of the Medicare bill. As all residents had access to medical services as offered by their original contract, the Leisure World Foundation had to develop a plan of integrating the medical care into their medical service. And this was done over the succeeding few months. In December, a contest was initiated to encourage the Yuletide decorations Members eagerly competed with lights, tree trimmings, cutouts, and full figures. It was so successful that outsiders were allowed to enter the gates to view the display. The contest became an annual event until the sh shortage of fuel put a stop to it. Life in the active adult community was not all ideal. Problems existed and problems arose. Residents complained about construction defects and unfinished work. The front doors of golden rain units had to be replaced as they warped in the rain. Hillsides began to slip as rain poured on the barren slopes. Special plantings were undertaken to hold the soil. Residents even complained about each other. Furniture and cardboard boxes were stored in the carports against the rules. Noisy TVs bothered their neighbors, and air conditioners were left on overnight. And dogs and cats were allowed to run free. And manners were illegally modified. It sounds a lot like the complaints we get today. Out of this lack of action by the Golden Rain Board, a group of residents banded together to trumpet their grievances. This group would evolve into the Rossmore Residents Association. We will, they became the watchdog organization, and we will hear more about them in future episodes. On April 24th, Mutual Four elected its own directors. In July of 1966, a fire broke out at 1200 Fairlawn Court. Prompt action by the residents and the fire department saved most of the building. Repairs were soon undertaken and the residents were back in their homes by November. Work was begun on Clubhouse 4, later to be named Hillside. The proposed design sketch appeared in the Rossmore News. Work was planned to be completed in seven months. In August, the Rossmore Scholarship Foundation 
was formed to help educate deserving high school graduates. Rossmore continued to grow as Mutual Five elected its directors. Also in August, Gordon Sherwood replaced Robert Nelson as administrator of Leisure World Foundation. Sherwood had been in charge of the service department under Nelson and was capable of handling this new role. In his farewell statement to the residents, Nelson wrote of several noteworthy accomplishments of the new community. The development of the Medicare supplement, development of clubs and associations to bring residents closer together, and the active participation of the residents on boards and committee he commended. He thanked the total Rossmore community as it, for working together to make this such a wonderful place to live. In the meantime, Rossmore was becoming more complex. By looking at the governance of the community, now that it was two years old, with a population of 3,700, one could realize that it could only get more complicated if it were to continue in its present form. Five mutuals were operational, and two more would soon be electing directors. Twenty directors were given advice and suggestions to the Leisure World Foundation. The book work and the service department seemed to be overrun with jobs. Preparation of the budget for each mutual was another difficulty faced by the Leisure World Foundation. Something definitely needed to be done. A year earlier, the FHA administrator, Harry Johnson, had seen the potential problem and suggested that unification be undertaken. Now, the new president of Mutual One, Dudley Frost, proposed the formation of two cooperatives for the west side of the valley and two cooperatives for the east side of the valley. The first Walnut Creek Cooperative Mutual would include Mutual One, Mutual Three, Four, Five, Six, and Seven, and the future Mutuals Eight and Nine when they got organized. Mutual Two would become sec the start of Second Walnut Creek Mutual, and Mutuals 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, etc., would be included in the new Second Walnut Creek Mutual. These units would be located south of Stanley Dollar Drive. There was extensive discussion about the possibilities. There were positive and negative pro problems that had to be resolved. Information was given to all the residents and procedures needed to be developed so that everybody understood the situation. Legal formalities had to be determined and separate ballots needed to be prepared for each mutual as each mutual had to vote on the issue. A two-thirds vote was required. In November of 1966, mutuals three, four, and five voted for unification with mutual one. Mutual one, however, did not vote positively for unification. It was concerned about its financial situation and it wanted more information from its directors. It was essential that Mutual One vote for unification as it was the oldest and largest mutual and its financial situation was the strongest. On December 15th, Mutual Six voted to join Mutual Three, Four, and Five. And on January 19, 1967, Mutual 7 elected its first directors. And on February 7, the four mutuals elected officers for the new First Walnut Creek Mutual. Roland Duncan was chosen president. And on March 9, Mutual 7 voted for unification. And 12 days later, on March 21, after a series of discussions and informational notices, the residents of Mutual One voted 421 to 12 for unification and become part of First Walnut Creek Cooperative Mutual. 
Now the tedious work of preparing and approving the bylaws, the transfer of property, and new occupational agreements, the necessary stock certificates should be begun. It was not until five months later, on October 31st, that the final papers were filed and the first Walnut Creek Cooperative Mutual became a complete operating entity. This strengthened the entire community for the years ahead. At this time, it was proposed that the medical clinic, which had been operating out of the Junior Dollar Clubhouse, be expanded or that a new building be constructed. There was also talk of buying the golf course from Ross Cortese. So at the end of the third year of Leisure World of Walnut Creek, the residents looked happily to a future of peace and contentment. But that was not to be. There were many surprises in store for them. And that's what we will be discussing in our next program. We will examine the causes of the collapse of the Ross Cortese Empire and how the residents of Rossmore worked together to form a new community, the Rossmore of Walnut Creek we know today. Until then, this is John Nutley saying thank you for watching.